Welcome back, students, to another short courses with me, Professor Castor, where we take the larger courses and we break them down into bite-sized chunks. Also, at the end of this particular course, we will be trying up a new thing that I'm going to be calling Story Time with Professor Castor, where we will be discussing any kind of interactions, personal or on the gaming table, with the said casters. Alrighty, the time some of you have been waiting for. Let's discuss Vladimir Tvesky, the Dark Prince. Kodor, Warcaster. Even in times of old before the Iron Kingdoms, when certain lands of Kodor were in the province of barbaric tribes, among those who rode to battle were some possessed of rugged honor who united their people with clarity of vision. Chieftains ruled these hordes, and horse lords ruled the chieftains. Of noble stock, horse lords ruled for generations with oppressive strength, calculated cruelty, and with the dominant of chaos of the world. The Tzebeskis are one of the strongest families to rule Kodor's eastern territories. Indeed, a millennia ago, the Tibeskis were the governors of Old Korska, before it fell into ruin. They even held the throne of Kodor for a time. Though reduced in influence, the Tibeski name still resonates with Kodor's eastern people. Vladimir Tibeski holds the title of Great Prince, a ruler of a limited number of great houses that govern the Veloskia, or provinces, of Kodor each with a limited sovereignty over their territories, yet he represents much more. Umbri was its own kingdom in ancient times, and its people have remained proud of their heritage and eager to see that kingdom reunited. It is upon the Tibeskis family they pin this hope. Recent conflicts created an opportunity for this to come to pass, which has only elevated the status of Vladimir Tibeski in the eyes of all Umbrian people. Many esteemed and powerful families, including several other great princes, owe his family fealty from old oaths set in bone and sworn in blood. The influence he wields in this region has been enough to create a constant tension within the capital, where he has, at times, been considered a possible threat to the Venar dynasty. Above all else, he is a living relic of past glories and bloody deeds. Prophecy delivered to the Tibeski kings of old tells a great doom to befall Kodor when Tibeski's line comes to an end. Those who know of this legend call Vladimir Tibeski the Dark Prince. So powerful is blood in his veins that men shy away from his gaze. He is a man of few words, accustomed to being heard when he speaks. As some are born to capture strength and beauty with paints or to write great works of poetry, Vladimir was born to make war. He has waged many campaigns in his service to the nation as a brilliant tactician as well as a potent warcaster. A swordsman with few equals, he brings swift death to all who dare to cross his blades with him. Worthy opponents, he treats to longer duels, but he dispatches most enemies with little consideration. Also, from personal experience, even if it's a friendly duel, he'll still draw blood because that's just the kind of man that he is. Vladimir takes great pride in wearing the ancient plate of his forefather. Although it has been some sorcerer's repairs over the centuries, it is the same suit of crimson mail his ancestors Prince Borovan Tibeski wore to the battle against the Orgoth. Vladimir has served the crown in training other warcasters. It is no great secret that he became intimately acquainted with the promising young Sorska Kratikov during his mentoring. Little is publicly known of this affair other than it seemed to end abruptly but may have been subsequently resumed, though the two have only rarely been seen together since. Whatever the nature of this relationship, it changed them both. There is some initial speculation that Sorska was rebuffed due to her lowly heritage, but those who know Vladimir cannot credit such a motive and believe the situation was more complicated than it appeared. Whatever the case, Vladimir seemed determined to stay true to the legacy of his forefather, who were always committed to their duties even at the expense of their own happiness. There are those who call such notions, and his adherence to ancient tradition, exercises in vanity, but Vladimir Tsebeski is part of a code that defines him and connect him to his past. Though Vladimir is respected for his great accomplishments, not all who meet him love him. It is whispered among the courts that the time of Tsebeski's needs to end, and some see Vladimir as an unpleasant reminder of a vanished era. These conspirators anticipate the day when the Dark Prince falls and the vast treasures of the Tsebeski family are annexed into the vaults of the Kadorn treasury. I've worked with Vladimir, especially the younger version of Vladimir, multiple, multiple times. And I would say he is probably one of the best duelists in Kodor, if not the best. Also, his ability to inspire ordinary men to great feats of strength and speed, 
on the battlefield is something to admire. He makes heroes out of all of them. Let's move on. Alrighty, as I mentioned earlier, we we're doing a story time with Vladimir today. The first time I saw this guy, I was thinking, well, one, I didn't know who Vladimir was, and two, I thought he, I, I wasn't sure if he was a print until someone actually told me, because if you ever see his forecaster armor, it's actually incredibly ancient. Like, it's been modified for years, and I was told it was actually from the Orgoth era, which is, you know, hundreds of years ago, if not almost a millennia ago. However, the first time we actually fought together on the battlefield with each other, not not against, because we fought against each other, I probably wouldn't be around today. It was an engagement I was actually hired onto against a army of Meaneth at the time, uh, with a couple warcasters on, or a couple warjacks on their side, and you know us on ours. And to see Vladimir be able to just remove soldiers off the battlefield, like. He has some kind of spell that makes him into some, I don't, I don't know, war jack himself. Increases his speed, strength, just, he can just chop through men like they're not there, chop through war jacks the same way. He can enter engagements, leave engagements without even a second thought. I actually watched, uh, actually watched him in one engagement where him and a war jack went up mano a mano and he overpowered a war jack with his spells and his speed. Chopping it in half at the center. It was a meaneth light jack, but even then, a man versus a war jack is still incredible. Also, towards the end of the battle, he actually had his war jacks that were in reserve a little bit further behind run forward with the speed that makes Harkovich actually look a little slow, and caught the caught the enemy warcaster by surprise, forcing him to evade the field. By the time the battle was over, I was actually pretty in awe of Vladimir Tepesky's ability to make war. Like, like as mentioned in the story, like, you know, some people are meant to paint, some people are meant to, you know, be poets or writers or whatever. But this man's meant to be on the field of battle. And it shows in every action that he does. All his men, totally 100% behind him. All his warjacks, perfectly aligned, able to move quick. He said I did an okay job, which, you know, if I did or not, I can't remember because I was kind of in awe. I was almost working on autopilot watching this man do his work. You're not given too many opportunities to watch somebody, a master of their craft, put in the work on the field. So you want to learn everything you can while, while you're there. Also, it helps you to survive a lot of other engagements, too. So look forward to if I ever get to work with him again. Alrighty, students. Well, that does it for this short course. And as always, thank you, Private Tier Press, for letting us read your fantastic lore. And as always, your homework is going to be please like, subscribe, comment, let me know how I'm doing, and share it with your friends and fellow gamers alike so we can increase the class size. And as always, class dismissed.